Welcome to Manga Experts. We are back with another top 10 recommendation list. If you like our videos, please leave a like and a comment of your favorite suggestions below. Without any further ado, let's get started. Number 10, Eternal Kingdom. On a seemingly ordinary and mediocre day, a rift rips open in the sky and countless monsters start falling from above. The main character, Yi Tianxing, survived the seven days of cataclysm, along with his sister and the others by relying on his innate third eyes. After that, a myriad of planets appeared out of nowhere and started combining with Earth, converging into a giant planet. At this point, the Earth has opened a new chapter, the Eternal Kingdom. The world building of this manhua is really massive. The story is also good, but the plot moves at the pace of a bullet train, and many things are left up to the reader to understand on his own. Main character is always prepared for future events, but he has a big plot armor thingy whenever he is in danger. He just pulls something out of thin air and beats the shit out of his enemies with the plot armor thing. The art is also good, and it becomes even more better during fight scenes. It also has some kingdom building elements, which become more better as the story progresses. Translation is also a little bit bad sometimes, but it is still readable. Some sites have missing panels, which can also put some readers off. Only read this if you can bear a fast-paced manhua with a lot of good kingdom building elements. Number 9. Treacherous Subject Saves the Country Main character is a noble in the Queen's Court. He is corrupt and rotten to the core. One day the kingdom was under attack from another tribe. The main character tried to run away with his gold but died in an accident which looked like he was trying to protect the queen. When he woke up, he was in a different place and an angel told him that he has to help in rebuilding the kingdom again from the start and he will die if he fails in this mission. This manhua has a pretty complicated but very good story. It starts off a little bit lame but becomes better after the second mission. Main character is totally ruthless and cunning. He is also not a simp. He can do anything for victory. Abilities in this manhua really packs a punch. Kingdom building elements are more on the lighter side. The only major problem with this manhua is the translation, but it is still readable if you have autocorrect installed in your brain by now. Number 8. Overbearing Tyrant In the year 202X, the Otherworlders invaded Earth. The Otherworlders have more sophisticated technology and hunted down humans with combat robots and viral weapons. And the remaining humans battled on for 10 years just to survive. The main character, Park Sung Hyun, was the leader of the troops in Incheon. Prior to the invasion of the Otherworlders, he used to be a part-timer at a convenience store like any ordinary person. But he became a strong warrior in the process of losing his family and battling to avenge them. In the midst of the attack against the Otherworlders headquarters, Park Hyun Sung got trapped in a warp portal with the leader of the Otherworlders. When he woke up, he found himself in a fantasy world that reminded him of the medieval times in Europe, and his soul was trapped inside a weak 15-year-old blonde boy's body. This is an isekai manhua. The art of this manhua is well polished. Characters are written very well and you don't feel like you are reading another noble reincarnator type manhua. The personality of the main character can be annoying for some people. He is an adult but after reincarnation he acts a little bit like a 15 year old kid which is a downer. The overall story is quite good and unique and it has some kingdom managing elements in it. The main character faces corruption at the start in his kingdom just like bug player and long live the king. Number 7. Noble Reincarnation Blessed with the Strongest Power from Birth Born as the 13th prince, Noah was originally in a position removed from the imperial succession, so he freely passed his time in the fief granted to him. However, the crown prince died before the emperor. The imperial succession would be fairly contested among the remaining princes. Noah, being the strongest despite living freely, overwhelmed the other princes and eventually became the emperor with the most power in the world. There are many nobility type mangas which try to show the inner workings of the empire and show a power struggle between the different princes over the throne, but this one really nails it. The main character is a reincarnated person so he has a lot more experience of real life than a newborn baby which gives them a head start. He is overpowered from the start and he is not just simply overpowered. He also uses his brain a lot, gets out of situations which can lead to war or jealousy just by using his brain. He has a problem that he uses money most of the times to solve his problems which seems a bit unfair. The art is gorgeous, the characters are also decent but they are most of the times overshadowed by the awesomeness of the main character. The overall story is also good and it develops more with each passing chapter. Overall it's an awesome manga with light kingdom building and managing elements in it. Some sites have bad translations, so be careful. Number 6. Inaka no Home Center 
After a long day of labor, Masaru, who works for a rural home improvement store, sees his co-workers off and walks to his van but he never made it back, as he is immediately summoned to Alstasia by a frivolous goddess and her mother. They tell him that he's to be reincarnated in this strange land and is given the chance to roll for special abilities. He pulls the lever of the mystical slot machine before him and manages to get a perfect skill set. For a carpenter anyway. Now back on the ground and in the company of a race of bunny people, Masaru decides to take his new life as it comes, maybe get into manual labor again and build some houses. This isekai manga is really wholesome. There are also many kingdom building elements in it. The art is gorgeous. It shines the most during fight scenes. The story is also quite good. The plot keeps on moving at a decent pace. The personality of the main character is also pretty good. Overall, it's an awesome isekai kingdom building type manga. Number 5. Genji Tsushugisha no Okuku Kaizoki Kazuya Soma found himself summoned to another world and his adventure did not begin right away. After he presents his plan to strengthen the country economically and militarily, the king cedes the throne to him and Soma finds himself saddled with ruling the nation. What's more, he's betrothed to the king's daughter. Now in order to get the country back on its feet, Soma calls the wise, the talented and the gifted to his side. Five people gather before the newly crowned Soma. Main character becomes the king of the kingdom he is summoned in and he has some really good kingdom management skills because he is a realist. There are also some good battles in it. The art of this manga is also good but the female characters are a little bit over sexualized as usual. Other than that, this is a must try for kingdom building genre fans. It also has an anime adaptation but the manga is still better than the anime. Number 4. The Sword of Dawn the main character died in a plane crash accident. He was transported to a strange spatial installation orbiting a strange alien world with a physical body. For over a hundred thousand years, he observed the emergence and evolution of life and the formation and fall of civilizations until he woke up in a coffin. The story follows Gawain, the Grand Duke and the founder of the Kingdom of Ansu. This is a reincarnation manhua with heavy kingdom building elements attached to it. The pacing of this manhua is too slow. The art of this manhua is marvelous and increases your immersiveness in this fantasy world. The world building is also unique and original. Only read this if you are interested in reading a manhua with a lot of explanations, alchemy, and heavy-handed kingdom managing elements, and read it on Billy Billy Comics for the best translation. Number 3. Isekai Ken Kokuki Our protagonist is reborn in another world. Apparently, he had been reincarnated as an abandoned child. Before his eyes were abandoned children like him. In order to survive, he led them into farming. Little by little, orphans gathered and upon hearing rumors of a village, others began to migrate. The group that had been nothing but children had become a village before anyone realized. And then various countries in the surroundings started to have an eye on it. This is the epic tale of the man who would later be known as the Divine Emperor. It's an isekai manga with kingdom building elements and it gets a bit darker later on so it is not recommended for people with faint hearts. Number 2. I've become a rogue lord in a world where only I can level up. A young man has earned first place on the leaderboard of a strategy game set in another world. But when he does, the game's management team decides to have him be reborn into the world of that game as a special privilege. Even worse, he has become Elhen Entrian, the corrupt feudal lord who dies in the game's prologue. If the game's story proceeds as expected, the troops of the neighboring country will invade Elhen's territory tomorrow. In order to protect himself, Elhen uses the special level up system and game knowledge that only he has to prepare weapons to fight. But the corrupt feudal lord's troops aren't able to move the way they normally do. This is totally a beast of a manga. The story is focused on kingdom building and conquer the world elements. MC is smart and makes decisions that only hardcore gamers can make. The story is also good, so are the characters. Kingdom building mangas are very hard to find and this is totally a hidden gem. Give it a try if you are into kingdom building or system mangas. Number 1. Throne of the Dragon King Main character transmigrated out of the blue and he had reincarnated as the eldest crowned prince, Ao Fan, of the Eastern Dragon Palace. He had to inherit the Eastern Dragon Palace and become the next Eastern Dragon King. At the time of the crisis, Ao Fan discovered the existence of the system and activated it which brings him lots of items and points. He started defeating anyone who refused to comply with him. He swore to lead the Dragon Clan to rise again and contend for hegemony among the Divine Emperors. The story of this manhua is quite good. 
The plot is quite fast-paced at start, which can put some readers off but it becomes stable later on. The art is quite good. It shines the most during fight scenes. Characters are also well-crafted. There are some very good kingdom-building elements in it. Only read it on Billy Billy Comics. Other sites have bad translation and missing panels which can nullify your whole reading experience.